So, squad's announced, jerseys are got, send-off has been had, back to training tomorrow. How are you feeling? Yeah, um, it's a lot all at once, um, but yeah, it's brilliant. It's, it's what we've waited so long for, and yeah, it's all starting to sink in now, obviously, with things like this and the shirt presentation, and yeah, it's just brilliant. And I was just chatting to Izzy Atkinson before you, and obviously she was the... We all said there would be someone that was a bolter in the squad, and it was very much her. Right. You were kind of that person with the US camp, where you weren't in initially, and then you got called in, and then really, really impressed Vera. What was it like coming into the camp off the back of knowing that you'd had that experience in the States? Yeah, it was massive for me, actually, and that was a, a challenging point, like to hear that you're not in a squad, especially in the run-up to a World Cup. I was, I'm not going to lie about it. I was absolutely devastated. I was heartbroken, but you know the quality of the squad and the depth in squad, and she needs to see players because ultimately she had to pick players for the World Cup. Um, when I got called in for an injury, that's never nice, but I just thought that this is an opportunity that I could, need to show what I can do um, and yeah for me that was something that I'll always be proud of myself for is how you handle those situations and how much you fight back and yeah Vera was uh, supportive and, and we communicated a lot and um, I think she really just wanted to see me kick on and really produce consistently what she believes that I can produce and I wanted to take the momentum of that unbelievable USA camp into the rest of my club season and I feel like I managed to maintain that form and yeah, luckily, I think that's been a massive help to being sat here right now. And Vera said that there was a few things that she had talked to you about that you needed to tweak in your game, but it was a fairly tight turnaround to be told those things and then have like a camp against the best team in the world, arguably. Yeah. Yeah. How did you achieve that? Um, well, yeah, there were things that we spoke about, and I've obviously been a professional footballer for a few years now, and I've played in different positions and different roles and managers want you to play slightly differently and for me I always tried to do those things but I never wanted to uh, to lose my personality and what I can bring to the to the squad and I think for me USA was just a massive well oh, just give it everything you've got and and be you obviously do all those things that the team need you to do but also just try and show in moments maybe what makes you different to other players so I think it was just I had nothing to lose at that point and maybe that that was something that worked positively for me in that moment and I just kind of ran with it it's probably a good time for it to come as well yeah. in the sense that it's not coming now when you're trying to get into a World Cup squad yeah. and you're able to prove your time a little bit ahead of it coming into this camp then how are you feeling yeah no it was it was nerve-wracking I, I knew that I'd had a good camp in, obviously in the America camp and I knew that I'd worked really hard and, and done everything I could at club I'd managed to get a few goals and a few player of the match um, performances and that was a, a nice feeling because I knew that I'd given the best version of me and whether I was picked or not, I'd have no regrets and I wouldn't look back with any bitterness of myself and I'd just be happy for whoever was in the squad. But luckily, I feel like I've managed to, to maintain that run and, and came to training, just gave everything that I could. And, you know, uh, training's always a difficult one because there's so many people and you're working on so many different things. But, yeah, luckily it seems that she thinks I'm valuable enough to, to be in the squad and yeah, coming into training I just wanted to enjoy it and know I'd done everything possible. And it's been a busy few days between these sort of media engagements, the send off. Is there any part of you that's just looking back to getting on a training pitch tomorrow and just playing some football for the next couple of days? Yeah, I, I, you could say so. Obviously that's why we're here and that's what we love doing and, and now we've lost that bit of nervousness because now we know the squad and now we can really start working towards the games that we have and that will be a nice feeling um, to just be relaxed and just know that you're you're part of it all um, but I think secretly we all really enjoy things like this these days because this is what the girls have fought so hard for so many years to get women's football in this country to this point we want kids to see everything know the girls know their stories so secretly the girls love the cameras um, and it's what they want to be doing but yeah I guess just the one day of it otherwise we might get a bit lost without the football <laughs> and then even in terms of mentality how do you kind of keep yourself on a level playing field excuse the pun like with the highs of getting there the lows of friends missing out then the highs of the send-off events and seeing all the people talking about how brilliant it is yeah yeah no it's a difficult one and you know you hear all the time how difficult elite sport is and playing at this level but unless you're in it I don't think you understand how draining some things that you wouldn't expect to be draining would be obviously we're all so close and I play at club with Harriet and Jamie and um, yeah the, the people that they are and the players that they are 
uh, just so valuable to the squad and it was difficult. 23 was too small a number for me, for the, the class of people and, and footballers that we have. So yeah, it's draining and it's up and down, um, but I think you just have to remember that you're here to represent them, your friends, your family, your teammates, your club, and I think that's kind of what keeps me going to every day just do, do my best really. And finally, I'm asking every player this, but you all walked out to the same song, but if you had a choice of what song you could have walked out to, what would you have picked? It's a good question. Um, to be fair, we had a vote on the song, so we all decided that one, and now that's become a bit of an anthem, so I do love that one. It is a classic. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, I don't know, we were laughing the other day, um, we had some kind of techno music on in the changing room, and I was being myself and dancing around, very silly. So I'd say something like really techno, strobe lights, smoke, just all the drama, really, yeah. I love it. Um, so how are you feeling today? Um, I feel very happy today. I'm very tired after yesterday's Sky event. Um, it was a great event and I think we all really needed it after the past week. You know, everyone's been nervous and, you know, um, there's been a lot of mixed emotions. But um, I think today everyone's a little bit more uplifted now and we realise that we're all picked to go to a World Cup and, you know, the squad is finalised, so it's nice to see. It was a really nice moment when everyone was going up on stage to get their jerseys and Vera just had the opportunity to give everyone a massive hug and like have that moment with them because I know she said she didn't really get the chance to have moments with you all individually. Did that mean a lot to you? Yeah, of course, you know, we didn't have like individual moments of like saying that we had been picked for the squad and for the 23 and like I said, the past few days has just been hectic with, um, you know, emotions and everyone being nervous and everything. So it is nice to actually finally get that moment being presented with your jersey and you know actually realizing that you are picked and you're going to be on the plane for Australia. It's kind of been I assume an emotional few weeks for you as well with finishing up college and then coming straight into a training camp how have you been coping with it all? Um, yeah so I just recently graduated in May so um, I went out to uh, Denise Sullivan's team actually in North Carolina and I trained there for a couple of weeks and then I came home um, so yeah it's been a there's been a lot going on you know um, but right now I'm just trying to focus on, you know, going to a World Cup and realising that and picks and, you know, focusing on those three first three games because it's such a huge occasion and I don't think, I don't know, I'm not really realising it and I don't think I'm going to realise that until I'm actually in Australia and like playing in that first game. But yeah, full focus is on that now. Every time I see like an overhead shot of the stadium in Sydney, I'm like, oh, I'm going to be there. That's really strange. <laughs> um, how did you find training with the NWSL team? I really enjoyed it, you know, Denise has been talking about uh, North Carolina her whole life and she loves it over there, so I was really excited to see what it was about, but um, I think it's helped me a lot. I needed somewhere to train for that space for that month before we came into camp, um, but yeah, it's definitely, it was definitely great and they were really accommodating to me and everything and it was just, it was a really good experience. Yeah. Denise hasn't been in your ear being like, Heather, come join us. <laughs> She's been in my ear for the past year knowing um, I was going to finish up in FSU, but you know, the American system is different, you know, with the draft system and everything. If I could just go to North Carolina, I would in a heartbeat, but you know, it's different over there. Um, but I'm just happy and grateful that I got to have that experience. And looking ahead now to next week, France coming to town. It's an absolutely massive game, sold out in Tala. Are you looking forward to getting back out on the pitch and kind of, I suppose, doing what you all do best, which is play football? Yeah, of course. Like I mentioned, this week has just been um, surreal, you know, with being announced and people not getting picked and all this media and everything. And I think next week we're back in camp, we're back in Castlenock. Um, so it'll be a nice build up to the France game. Um, it's our send-off game and France are obviously a really, really good opponent, opponent, so it'll be a good match to prepare for the tournament, of course. And then, you know, the next day we're, we're heading off to Australia, so I think I'm really looking forward to next week, yeah. And your role within the squad has changed a little bit over the last couple of months. How are you finding that? Um, yeah, so, of course, I've been playing up front, you know, for the past two years with Vera. That was the first time I've ever played up front. Um, but, you know, I've played as a wing back or a winger my whole life and I've played as a full back recently with Florida State so I am a lot more comfortable as a wing back and I'm kind of just taking on that role now and I'm really enjoying it. And so I've asked every player this question but you all walked out to the same song earlier to get your jerseys. If you had one song that you could have chosen, what song would it have been? You know what, that's a, that's a really good, I'm just going to go with that song because you know it really is an Irish song and it just shows like the spirit of Irish people and the pride of having that jersey so I'm just gonna go with that. That's a very good answer.